Hello YouTube and welcome back to That's a Wrap. Today we will be reviewing the brand new Ghostbusters Afterlife. I just came back from watching this movie, but before I get into my review of this movie, consider this your spoiler warning because I will be talking spoiler-ish-ish. -ish. So you've been warned. Uh, so let's get on with this review. I enjoyed this movie very, very much. It's a nice continuance from Ghostbusters 1 and kind of 2, even though it relies heavily on Ghostbusters 1. And if you just kind of overarch those two movies and not remember like Ghostbusters 2, it does a really good job. There is so many callbacks to Ghostbusters, the, the original Ghostbusters, and it just gives me a sense of, I guess delight would be the best word to it, that they did not only the cast members uh, justice, but also Harold Ramis that played Egon. They did his character justice. As you all well know, he passed away in 2014, which obviously the year that we're in, he couldn't be uh, involved in any of these movies or the, I think the other one too, the 2016 one with all the girls uh, and this one, but they did a homage to him um, that I brought a tear to my eyes and I watched this movie with my nine-year-old daughter and she even kind of teared, uh, teared up a little bit. And yes, she's watched all of them, all three of them, including the, the all girls one, the re the revamp, whatever you want to call that. So she's watched every one of them. And when we were in the drive back, she said she teared up towards the end when those moments with, you know, how they were, uh, honoring him. So for my nine year old to be like, you know, in her feels when I looked and I was like, so I have to give that movie credit for honoring his memory. And even at the, at the end of that scene, and this will be a little bit of spoiler, a spoiler ish for that. Uh, they put his name for Harold on there. And I thought that was great, you know, and then we see the iconic, uh, Cadillac, you know, with its horns blaring in New York, and you're like, yeah, that that's a fitting end to, or not even a fitting end. Let's just call it a fitting tribute to not only the legacy of him with this, but the, just the whole cast. I mean, all four of them, everyone involved in the original Ghostbusters made Ghostbusters what it is now, which is a phenomenon from the merchandise to the, the iconic music, you know, the the, the theme to just the the iconic lasers you know don't cross the streams how many you know parodies have been done about that so i thought that this was nice and again i think they did it justice but with saying that i did find a lot of problems with this movie and by a lot of problems let me just say it was all mostly in the props department there was scenes where the Cadillac had it, it comes out of the uh, out of the police station and it finally has that noise that we all you know associate with the Cadillac with the Ghostbuster mobile and it comes out blaring with the lights on then the next scene the lights are off and then the next scene the lights are on and you're like it just takes you out because you're like well why, why do they turn off the lights what why do they turn them on now and stuff like that and I didn't enjoy, just like I didn't with the revamp with all the girls Ghostbusters, the way they portray Slimer now. I know I'm coming at this from the animated series and stuff like that, but this movie did touch a little bit on it. Now Slimer in the animated series helps them out a whole lot more, right? He's like part of the team. That's why we love Slimer. In this one, he's still kind of the movie Slimer, where he's kind of evil, but they do touch on it when they're trying to get the, 
the proton pack where they were the the where phoebe's friend uh mr podcast <laughs> uh tries to comes up with the brilliant plan to let out slimer and then slimer kind of helps them by chewing through the the gates or the jail cell so i thought that was a little bit of a callback to the cartoon which i appreciate that but i wish they would have done more of that because slimer for his whole you know being a ghoul or you know whatever he is you know a, a spirit if you will yes you know it's a scary thing and i get that that's what they're trying to do and keep it or to the original movie but f let's be frank for people that are my age 50 and under we watch the cartoons at least i remember watching the cartoons and slimer again was more of a helper to the ghostbusters than anything but again take that for what it for what it is uh i thought that now you could this could go either good or bad i thought they were hitting the nostalgia button way too hard i enjoyed it don't get me wrong because they had a scene where they're watching and you see child's play right come on they were who doesn't remember child's play from 1988 right we all do but they were just trying they were just hitting that nostalgia button way too much and i was like i get it you're trying to do the movie justice and it does it it pays homage it shows respect to the source material and again I, nine out of ten times i enjoyed that nostalgia hitting but you do realize that it it's a lot you know so i thought the acting was great from the stars of the or the main stars of the movie now this does skew to more of a teenage you know cast especially with phoebe trevor you know again podcast you know of uh, uh, uh phoebe's you know brothers trevor's girlfriend or whatever you want to call her so it does skew a little bit towards them and i thought they did a a fine job in carrying this movie because those four especially phoebe and Tr uh, not trevor podcast those two should be commended for carrying this movie they made it enjoyable i thought phoebe's portrayal of being being egon's granddaughter and being basically a spitting image of him as far as his uh, or her intellect matching him so young being like a genius they both are geniuses uh the way she just brought the you know equipment alive she did such a great job in in bottle like just being him and 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 being his granddaughter i thought she did a great job and again that little girl should be commended for ba like i said carrying this movie alongside no no small feat with the the best comedic person in this movie i thought it was going to be paul rudd right because we see paul rudd all over the it was all over the the advertisement the promos but yo podcast stole the show he was on his p's and q's and i love that he was like basically just you know a, a what modern is right he's basically doing a a vlog right a video log about everything that's going on and i was here for that now some of the original cast which i get they're trying to revamp their roles from back so so many years ago but some of their acting was a little bit for the brief time that they were there i thought it was a little bit over the top and i get it i guess they were trying to keep that same that same spirit of the 1984 movie but i don't know it was like okay you know and and some of just the extra especially like the sheriff and stuff like that it looked like they weren't paid enough to just act a little bit better i thought the pacing was a little off in the beginning 
it, it kind of needed to ramp up a, a little bit quicker, at least in my thought. But towards the end, it definitely pays off. Now, my daughter thinks it was like good the whole way through. And it just show, goes to show you that who the target audience was because she was in, involved in this movie, which I completely love. And it does that great. For us, a little bit older, you know, we probably, again, we're nitpicking, especially me, since this is what I do. I review movies and then break it down a little bit. Uh, it, it was, like I said, the pacing was just a little bit too slow in the beginning, but then it picks up and it definitely goes up and down, up and down. Yes, there's some fantastical elements in this and, you know, I'm willing to give it a pass just because it is Ghostbusters and the, the, the original Ghostbusters had just about the same fantastical element to it. And I was like, okay, you know, so I got to give this movie a pass and since I did it, those were those were grown ass adults back then, and these are kids, so it's probably more believable with the kids and having that just random luck than opposed to the grown <laughs> the grown folks in in 1984. Though I will just say this before I I give my rating for this movie, my daughter, the villain in this one, is the same villain as Ghostbusters one. My daughter turned to me and goes is that james charles and i was like is it it isn't but the the aesthetic of it was so close to james charles and i was like you know what for a second i i completely thought it was <laughs> it, it again it isn't but you couldn't tell from the beginning when you first see it uh when you first see the you know the villain arrive, you're like, God damn, that looks like like James Charles a lot. But, anyways, again, I enjoyed it. If you if you have a chance this weekend to go check it out, go check it out. Now be prepared. There is a little bit of adult language in this movie. It is rated PG thirteen. They do hit on a couple notes. A little bit above 13 there were some parents in there that would like gasp a little bit at the comedy especially you'll, you'll just be prepared because again there is a little bit of a, a couple swear words thrown in there and there's a scene in there where they're talking about well a couple of scenes one of them is like you know pa rudd's character and you know phoebe's mom and they're like oh you you know you're gonna you you know mr uh Gruberson wants to bone your mom, which a little bit of, you know, the, the crowd that I was with kind of cringed at that. I, I didn't mind it. My daughter just didn't even blink twice about it, but you could definitely hear some gasp in the in the crowd. So just be prepared for that. But I highly recommend this movie. It's good entertainment. I wasn't bored. Even though the pacing is a little bit rough in the beginning, but you get past that because they, again, they hit that nostalgia button and you're like, oh, you know, even though the pacing is still bad, they're hitting the nostalgia button. And you're like, oh, cool, but it still kind of lags, but you'll enjoy it. It's a, it's a fun film. And again, it does the original movies homage, honor, and we, we can't ask for anything more. Now, with all that being said, for me, this movie is a B plus. Yes, I know some people are going to be pissed off and be like, oh, this was an A. My, my daughter straight said this is an A++ movie. And I get it. But no movie is an A++ movie. Especially, like I said, with this one, the pacing issues, some of the acting and the some the some of the prop, you know, the the prop mistakes, not only with the Cadillac and the sirens, even in the lab in Eeyore's and in some of the plot devices that they use to move the story along or that don't even go anywhere. You're like, well, why was this even introduced if it wasn't, you know, meant to lead something? But again, for just in a pure in entertainment value, I found it. It's it's very good. And my soul was happier to see this because after the last Ghostbusters that we saw that gave everyone, you know, a weird taste in their mouth, this one hits the spot. So I think a B plus is respectable for this type of movie and a great rating. And I still with a B plus rating, which is a good rating. 
I highly recommend you guys to go watch this. It's good fun. But anyways, those are just my thoughts. I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. And like always, that's a wrap.